Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video will explain the genetic CNN. This is in line with the September theme on AutoML, Neural Architecture Search, and Hyperparameter Optimization, with a focus on neuroevolution. I think this algorithm is the best way to get started with neuroevolution, particularly for image classification using convolutional neural networks. So the high-level idea of genetic uh, CNN is to encode the microarchitectures, these microstructures that are uh, encoded within the convolutional neural network, through the use of binary strings. So in this example, the encoding for A1, A2, A3, and A4 is given with this code. So the way it works is the A1 is always connected to the input, and then A2 is encoded by this bit. So the 1 here indicates that A1 should connect to A2. From A3, it doesn't have any encoding, 0, 0, so no inputs, but a default is used on the A0 because A4 will use the output, I mean the input, the output from A3 for the input in this 111 connection. So in this other encoding here, B2 has uh, zero, it doesn't have any uh, input connections, and then additionally, none of these other nodes have the B2 connection. Therefore, this node is just totally excluded from the uh, convolutional cell. In this sense, the binary string in the genetic CN algorithm allows the network to find microarchitectures that have less, less complexity than the allocated uh, predefined parameter defining how many nodes are in the microarchitecture. So again, each of these nodes like A1, A2, A3, and A4 contain a 3x3 convolution followed by a ReLU activation followed by batch normalization. This is how the binary bit string used in the genetic CNN can find popular convolutional network architectures like VGGNet, ResNet, and DenseNet. So in VGGNet, the convolution operations are just uh, sequentially propagated ahead with the previous layer taking in the input as the output from the layer before. So this is encoded using this uh, bit string. The ResNet propagates the output uh, ahead to a further layer in the network. And this is done by using the one here in the bit string. So this layer here is encoded by this three bit string, which says one, meaning construct an edge from this node to this node, and then zero, meaning this one doesn't send its information ahead, and then uh, one, take the input from this node. DenseNet is the all one bit string, which is a more intense pattern of sending ahead the input and the output to all the inputs at the previous layers. So the size of the search space in the genetic CNN is that you need one half K times K minus one bits to encode the inter inner node connections in each uh, of these stages. So in neural architecture search, a stage is defined as different microarchitectures in the macro uh, neural network. So the way that this works is in convolutional networks, you don't have the same spatial resolution for every stage. So if there are three stages, K1 might have the 32 by 32 CIFAR 10 inputs, whereas K2 would, might have 16 by 16, and K3 would have 8 by 8 height width on the uh, feature maps used internally in the convolutional network. So in addition to the S parameter defining how many stages are in the network, there are these subparameters for the different K values, which uh, denotes how many nodes are in the microarchitecture. So for example, in K2 equals four, that means that there are going to be uh, four internal nodes that connect to the input in the second stage of the network. So in the case of having this uh, three internal nodes, four internal nodes, and five internal nodes, you're gonna need a, a length 19 bit string to encode this information, encode this network. So two to 19 means that there's over 500,000 possible networks, possible ways of connecting these nodes in this space represented by the binary encoding bit strings. The genetic CNN is an evolutionary algorithm used to design neural architectures. This is the general structure of an evolutionary algorithm. There's a way of initializing the members of the population, a way of evaluating which ones are the best according to some fitness function. Then you can do crossover, which is sometimes omitted in some neuroevolution algorithms, and then you would do mutation. And then you would repeat this cycle for a given parameter of iterations until you achieve the best uh, neural architecture for the problem. So in this algorithm, the initialization of the network is sampled from a Bernoulli distribution. So this compares things with uh, minimal initialization versus this Bernoulli sampling. If you remember in the NEAT algorithm, they uh, argue for having as minimal of an initialization as possible in order to have it not become too complex because a network with more complexity would theoretically never uh, get rid of its complexity if the only metric being used is accuracy. So they give this plot showing how across many iterations, random initialization and minimal initialization tend to saturate and they align with each other, they perform basically the same. Although it is worth noting that this comparison isn't a multi-objective search, meaning that they're not being uh, penalized for their additional complexity.
The mutation used in the genetic CNN is defined by these two parameters. The P sub n is the probability that there is a mutation at all. So when they take the uh, given architecture, they might not even mutate it at all. But then if it is uh, sampled and they do decide to mutate it, they use this Q sub m, which is the bit flip probability as they traverse the bit string. So say Q sub m is really high, like 50%. You would just traverse this and maybe 0 would go to 1, 1 would go to 0, 1 would remain 1, this one would remain 1 as well, and so on as you traverse the architecture bit string. Crossover in the genetic CNN is where you swap stages between two uh, like successful parent networks that have been selected for the next round. So the way this works again is with the P sub uh, C probability parameter, which is if you're going to have crossover at all, and then Q sub C, which is the parameter you use as you traverse the stages to see if you're going to swap them at all. So rem remember that stages define uh, like microarchitectures that operate on the same spe spatial resolution. So Stage 1 might be 32 by 32, 16 by 16, 8 by 8. So with this crossover probability, you might take this S2 from this parent and, uh, and like replace this one with this. So selection, they use an interesting selection algorithm in the genetic CNN paper. They use this roulette selection process. So the way this works is say A has the highest fitness, followed by B, C, and D. And then say there's another network, E, that doesn't get any uh, chance of being selected because it's the worst in the population. And the way that they're assigned their uh, slice of the pie is based on their performance relative to the worst member of the population. So basically they sample these uh, architectures from this roulette where they each have uh, a probability of being sampled proportional to their fitness function. Given all the mechanisms that have just been explained, this is what the complete genetic CNN algorithm looks like. Initialize a set of random neural networks using the bit strings and the Bernoulli distribution sampling. Select them with the roulette process crossover using the probability and the crossover parameter, mutate them, and then evaluate them again. So the way that they're evaluated is they're, the neural networks are uh, constructed from the bit string, and then they're trained for about 25 epochs for MNIST, and I think something like uh, 120 is what they use for CIFAR10 in this example. So the search parameters in this uh, paper are they have 20 individuals in the population at a time, and they go for 50 rounds of uh, evaluate, mutate, crossover. So in total, this allows for 1,020 explored networks. So in the MNIST example, the K, parameter, the K and S parameters allow for 2 to the 13 different networks. So in this case, the explored networks isn't that much smaller than the space of all possible networks. But in the case of CIFAR-10, where there's 2 to the 19 different architectures possible, it becomes much smaller. And you'd imagine, as you're scaling up and designing really complex networks, that this uh, right half of this inequality would get much larger. So on the MNIST experiment, they have this previous structure where they define this stage to be searched over and this stage, with this being a max pooling and then uh, the fully connected layer drop out and then the fully connected layer with the number of classes to be predicted. So they use this uh, S equals 2, K1, 3 nodes, and K2, 5 nodes. So there's 8,192 parameters and this show, I mean, uh, possible networks, and this shows how the performance improves as they go generation by generation. So most notably, they see that the average performance, I mean, all, all of the uh, metrics go up, even though it isn't such a surprisingly high uh, performance boost. And then this shows the plot. Again, this is used to compare the initializations, but it's still a useful plot just to see how the uh, accuracy begins to improve as they do the neural evolution. This is the results on the CIFAR-10 data set, using a little bit of a more complex network structure than in the MNIST example but you see that they get a better result, going from a max result of 75.96% to 77.06, and then uh, average goes up as well by about 2% as well. So these are some of the discovered architectures. These are the two best architectures here on the left and then here on the right. So you see how they have similar uh, connectivity patterns to many of the popular successful convolutional neural networks. Like this one has properties, the sequential chain of the uh, VGG net or the Alex net, this one has the uh, multiple path networks where it sends this uh, output this way, this way, and things like this, like in the inception network. And then this one has the always send my uh, input one ahead with the uh, ResNet architecture. This table shows how the, ge the genetic CNN networks found after 50 trials compare with some of the previous popular convolutional network architecture designs, with the uh, most successful one being the dense net architecture. So the uh, genetically discovered CNN doesn't quite achieve state-of-the-art results, although it does rival a lot of the uh, 
previously found architectures. But what's really interesting about this algorithm is the simplicity and the way that it can help you get started with neuroevolution. Additionally, you could imagine uh, the way that they are evaluating their networks are they're training them all the way to convergence on CIFAR-10 when a lot of techniques used now like uh, hyperband and then uh, parameter sharing for initialization could maybe speed up the evaluation. So instead of having 50 trials, you could have 100. And then again, they don't show like a third column that has the network complexity, but I'm pretty sure that this genetic network with the uh, S and K parameters defined in the paper have much less complexity than the uh, dense net used in this paper. This shows the results of scaling up the architectures found on CIFAR-10 to ImageNet. So they can't possibly uh, train on ImageNet for every evaluation because remember you're searching over a thousand architectures and it takes them 20 GPU days to train their network to convergence on the large scale ImageNet data set. So what they do is they grab the first two stages of VGGNet so that they can take the 224 input but 224 by 224 input from ImageNet and then downsample it um, in some meaningful way to the desired input size for the network that they've found. And then they'll increase the filter count. So instead of having, say, 8, 16, 32, or something like that with the filter counts with each stage, they have something like 256 to 512 to, I think, again, 512. Thanks for watching this video on the Genetic CNN. I think that this is a great algorithm for getting started with neural evolution and representing neural networks as bit strings. Thanks for watching again. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.